Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this tutorial, I will show you what are the three roots of topology. We need to understand the three conditions of good topology, and this is will continue the previous tutorial. The first rule in the three rules of topology is an edge loop must terminate into the void or into itself. So let me explain what that means. The first condition is that an edge loop needs to either terminate into the void or directly into itself. So let me show you using a default cube, shift A to add the mesh. The mesh is a cube, so let's zoom in just a little bit to show you. The cube is a perfect example of this, like a plane, a default cube has the perfect topology for a cube. If you run a loop cut alone of any of the sides, all of the loops meet themselves all the way around. So let's try to add look at control R to add look at here. As shown here, we can add look at on the different sides. For example, add look at on this side. Cube is just six grids all joined end to end. As shown here, six grids, six faces. Which grid having the same with grid having the same number of faces on them? If you were to isolate one of the sides, we'd be able to run loop, to run the loops draw, it's like any other grid. This is the core idea behind this approach to the topology. Everything can be broken down into simple grids, as shown here. Let me show you another example. If we take our cube and run it through a few operations, we can turn it into a cylinder with the same topology. Here are the steps we need to take to turn our cube into a cylinder. First of all, we need to go into edit mode. So we are into edit mode. Switch to face selection. Select the top and the bottom face of this cube. Hold the down shift and select the bottom and the top. We delete these faces by pressing X to delete these two faces. So uh, the third step is uh, we go back to our modifier tab and let's add subdivision surface modifier. Add the uh, subdivision surface modifier as shown here. Let's uh, turn off subdivision surface modifier. Because I have applied the rip, rip region, we should uh, join all these uh, four faces. So let's uh, turn on subdivision surface modifier. I have merged these uh, four vertices because I applied rip region process as shown here. I applied this uh, tool on uh, the cube, the default cube. Increase the number of uh, viewports uh, level to achieving the level second level to. After that, you go into object mode. So hit uh, the top key, apply the modifier. So let's apply the modifier. In this case, we can see that the, the mesh after the subdivision surface modifier was applied. Now we can do the same checks if the loop cut tool, as we did previously, if we run loop cuts from all directions, the loop either wraps into itself or goes into the void. One thing to note, to note here is uh, that even though we use it a subdivision modifier, so let's uh, here subdivision surface modifier. We 
Uh, it did not actually change the flow of our topology, it just added the mode geometry and changed the shape. As shown in our example, when working with uh, a lot of quads, as shown here, subdivision surface will not change your topology. And this is very important to take our board now, because if you end up applying your subdivision surface modifier and then you can notice a mistake afterward. It is much more difficult to fix. So let's jump into the next step, which is the second rule of topology. Loops must not intersect themselves. Pay attention to this rule. Let's add the default cube as shown here. Our next rule is that loops cannot intersect themselves. This might seem contradictory to the last rule, which is that loop, which, which is that loops can wrap back into themselves. But if you look to this shape, you will see how this second rule is different from the first one. So let's try to add some geometry to our default cube then try to add loop cut and they will show you how loop how loops must not intersect themselves follow this step so let's add loop cut like this just drag it a little bit to, to the bottom of this default cube let's add another loop cut like this just drag it then confirm using the left mouse button. Let's add another loop cut over there. So let's drag it just a little bit like this. Then we need to uh, just uh, move it on this, move this uh, vertex on this edge. Just as you should. Uh, Hit the G key twice, as shown here, let's escape, then the G key twice, then you can move it on the Y axis. I'm gonna add in some edges and some vertices using the knife tool hit K, K key on the keyboard then be care then so let's add uh, some vertices just like this then hit enter to confirm the action so let's join these two vertices using the knife tool hit enter to join use also the knife tool like this just should be straight or aligned to x-axis hit enter then using the knife tool also as shown here Hit enter. Let's also join this two vertices using the knife tool. Then hit enter. I think this is so good. It's a time to add a loop cut, for example. Control R. And there is the result that we want to show you. As shown here, some loop cuts are not terminated into the void. Instead of meeting itself from a current loop, it is uh, straight, draw itself perpendicular to the part of a loop it intersects if we flatten the mesh into a flat plane. It is easier to see how the grid was changed to form this issue. It is though 
we took one of the sides of the grid and attached a side perpendicular to it, as shown here. And we have this grid issue as shown here. By clicking to confirm, then hit enter. Also, this loop cut, it's this loop cut, it's not good, and this is a huge mistake. You can make it if you don't pay attention to the distribution of the loop cuts and the flow of the faces, edges throw your 3D model. Concerning the loop, concerning the loops must not spiral down a mesh. We have this mesh, let's apply a loop cut and let's see what is the result. The last rule is that we do not know we don't want these loops to spiral down a mesh. This happens when the loop is not joined back into itself. Then let's apply as shown here. As you can see, this might seem acceptable because it does not cut the row itself and terminates in the void. But this can cause serious issues when trying to deform it. When we try to perform later operations such as UV or wrapping or any sort of deformation, this is a huge pain to deal with. And this what we call spiral loop cut. Also, uh, these leaves faces at the top and the bottom that are almost impossible to terminate without breaking the other rules and makes operations that need to run along the corner of the mesh, such as bevels, are impossible. You can see one of these face faces highlighted. On this edge, for example. And we can summarize what these three rules are good topology employ. You should keep all of this in mind, especially as we move into the next section where we'll be intersecting grids. The concern in the topology, all of the faces in a mesh are quads. All of the normals on the mesh are facing in the right direction. All of the loops terminate into themselves or the void. None of the loops overlap themselves. None of the loops spiral around the mesh. So let me continue this tutorial. In this section, I will discuss how should the grids intersect. Our first example of intersecting grids will be starting with a simple grid, which you can see over here. So let's add it. It is a normal grid. To create a grid, as in the preceding, uh, as in the preceding figure, see the following. Go into edit mode, then perform a loop cut on the plane by pressing Ctrl R, Adding two loop cuts like this and adding other two loop cuts intersecting the first two loop cuts. Scroll up on the mouse wheel so you can have two loop cuts. And here is the result. So now that you have a matching grid, we can tweak it to help illustrate an intersecting grid. We are going to extrude a face from the center of the plane to see how it affects the topology. First, select the center of the face, so switch to face selection mode. Select the, the center face, press E to extrude the face, press E to extrude the face. Just like this, move the mouse so that the selected face is pulled away from the rest of the faces to make an extrusion like this along the Z axis. Finalize the transform by pressing left mouse button. After finalizing the transform, it should look something like this. We can render our tests to see whether this topology still follows all of our topology routes. If we run a loop across the extrusion, as shown here, 
Control R. And here is the loop cat. You can see that it terminates into the void as shown here. It terminates into the void from this part and from this part. Void and we have another void. It doesn't intersect itself and does not do any weird spiraling as shown here. Also, if we run a loop around the extrusion like this, you can see that it terminates into itself to form a closed loop, it does not intersect itself and it does not spiral around the mesh. Now that you have confirmed that the extrusion we did follows all of our topology rules, we can take a look at some of the defining features of this shape. In terms of topology, what we have here is a cube that has intersected a grid. We will start by examining the vertex highlighted. In our case here, highlighted vertex circled in red. In the preceding figure, in the preceding shape, a vertex is highlighted at the corner of the intersection between the cube and the plane. This corner is called a pole. So let's define this a new term, which is used usually in topology, which is a pole. A pole is a vertex that has more than four edges intersecting at the vertex, like this example. As you can see in our example, this pole has five vertices. This pole have, uh, have five vertices. For quad-based topology, you usually do not want more than five edges on your poles. If you take a look at a normal vertex on a grid, they have four edges connecting them. If you flatten our shape back into a plane, we get a new perspective of the same topology. Also, in this case, if we run our loop cuts over this model, to check the, this topology, you can see that it also follows our rules mentioned previously. It terminates into the void, does not intersect itself and does not spiral. This has the same topology as our intersecting cube, just a different shape. So let's try some Try adding some loop cuts, control R. In this case it terminates into the void, also terminates into the void, also in this case. Even in this flattened shape, flattened shape with this new perspective, we can look at the corner pole again, as shown here. Thanks for watching, see you in the next tutorial, which is how to identify grids on a complex shape.